Hi, to, to celebrate the 50 years of you winning the AL and AL Cy Young and AL MVP, uh, we're doing this lithograph. So tell me a little bit about this. Hey, this litho is pretty cool. It has the blue glove that I used in 71. It highlights the 71 uh, Cy, Young, Cy Young and MVP trophies. And of course, I wore number 35. I like the, the way it came out. It has the green and gold. But what I really enjoy is the fact that I used the blue glove, and that was a big deal back in the day. And uh, I've teamed up with Autograph One and the artist named John Hanley, and I'm very proud of what we've done. Talk to us uh, and your fans about the memory that you have that is just still stuck in your head. Well, first, it's quite an honor to have won both the, the Cy Young and the MVP in the American League that year. Uh, and I was 24-8. It seems like it was yesterday, but I remember pitching some pretty cool games where the fans across the country came out to see the Oakland A's and this kid named Vita Blue. Uh, I uh, just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was on a great team with some great players, but uh, 71 is something that I'll never forget. And I wish every athlete could experience being in the zone, as they used to refer to it as, uh, of being at the top of your game, male or female amateur or professional, be at the top of your game, and I got a chance to experience that. So actually, to top it off, after having won the, being the winner of the Saturn and MVP, I was the starting pitch in the 1971 All-Star Game, and that was pretty cool. From that one game, I was told that there were 17 players that got inducted into the Hall of Fame from that 1971 All-Star Game. Uh, Vida, uh, you started your illustrious career in the minor leagues at the age of 17. Uh -huh. uh, Descri turned, turned 18 that July, though. Uh, describe what your mind was going through leaving home and playing the minor <laughs> league baseball at the age of 17. Uh, it's been a while, but I would imagine that, uh, you know, when you're that age, that young, you leave at home for the first time, you just, you're wondering what's going to happen. You, nobody knows, you don't know. The unknown is... And I grew up in a small town in northwest Louisiana, and, you know, coming from the south, I didn't know what I was going to experience as far as getting along with other people. But I was there to play baseball. It now becomes a job. That's, that's what it is for these young men out here now. This is your job now. You're not in high school. You're not in college. You get paid to do this. So you, you learn to, to the, the fact that it is a job. You take, at least I did, took it, take it a little bit more serious and, uh, I put a lot of time and effort into it, and the reward I got out of it was uh, making it to the big leagues and playing for 17 years. And after a couple of years, you started your major league career with the Oakland A's at the age of 19 in 1969. What was going through your mind when you finally stepped on the mound at a major league game? Well, you, you pursue that, that goal of making it to the big leagues. Uh, they say that once you get there, the toughest thing about going to the big leagues is staying in the big leagues. Because there's some kid in AAA that's going to be the next Vita Blue or the next Reggie Jackson or the next Barry Bond that's trying to take your job or the next Willie Mays, you know. And uh, I don't know. I just try to stay focused on doing my job the best of my ability every day. And uh, like I said, it paid. I was on some good teams where we won, a, uh, we won a championship three years in a row in five years out of a five-year run where we won the division. But in between those five years, we won the uh, World Series three years in a row. So... Uh, it was something that I was very fortunate to get a chance to do. You think about how many guys that played a whole careers and never make the playoffs less known, uh, play in the World Series. Uh, uh, late, great Ernie Banks, who they always talked about all those years he played with those terrible Cubs teams and he never made the playoffs. But uh, the Cubs have had some success, and uh, I was actually pulling for them when they did win it. What, four years ago now, but I was pulling for Boston prior to them winning it, but I was lucky to play in the major leagues and, and uh, accomplish some great things personally, but from a team standpoint, your goal is to win the championship, so I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. Vida Blue, a former CY Young winning pitcher and an MVP who won three straight World Series championships with the Oakland A's in the 1970s and he was a legendary 16 All-Star, has reportedly passed away according to what the team announced. He was just 73 years old. The cause of death in this exact moment in time has not been revealed 
failed by the family but of course they came out to reveal and actually release a heartbreaking emotional and touching statement where they said that there are a few players with more decorated careers than Vida Blue. The athletics said in a touching statement which actually they released via their official Twitter account. He was a three-time championship an MVP, a six-time All-Star, a CY Young Award winner, and of course, an Oakland A's Hall of Famer. Vida Blue will always be a franchise legend. He was a huge friend to so many people, and of course, they continued and said, we send our deepest condolences to his family, friends, during this very, very difficult time. Blue attended a ceremony, of course, in Auckland during the A's Met Series. And that was just last month, honoring the 50-year anniversary of the 1973 championship team. But an, um, in a very... A mysterious way he succumbed to health related illness and of course he passed away the south pole um from louisiana who pitched a no hitter in the 1970s won an all-time mvp and sway young awards like i've told you in the same season in 1971 when he went 24 to 8 with a 1.82 era and of course a 0.95 whip and of course 300 101 strikes in 312 innings that's unprecedented pitching of course 24 complete games and eight shoutouts along the way after the breakout season that was when the 22-year-old Blue and, of course, the owner, Charlie Finley, were locked into a contract dispute that reportedly led to Blue to briefly retire during that time. For those who were around, they can tell you that this was a genius who was really very much talented. And, of course, he ended up pitching in only 151 innings in 72 and mostly pitched out of the bull pain in the postseason. Blue pitched five more seasons for the Oakland before he was traded to the Giants and he pitched four seasons for San Francisco and was then dealt to Kansas City where he pitched two seasons for the Rays. In around 1983, Blue was sentenced to three months in jail for possession of approximately a tenth of an ounce of cocaine amid a federal cocaine investigation, according to what the Association Press reported at the time. And he was born banned from the Major League Baseball for the 1984 season. Blue pitched two more seasons for the Giants. That was in around 1985-1986. And um, according to what we can tell from his huge biography he finished his career with 209 161 record a 3.27 error and of course 2175 strikeouts Vida Blue, rest in peace, my mentor, a hero and a friend. That was the statement that was released by the former Auckland A star Dave Stewart, which he released um, on his official Twitter account. He said, I remember watching a 19 year old phenomenal dominate baseball and at the same time alter my life. There are no words for what you have meant to me and so many others. My heart goes out to the Blue family and of course here at Digital Media, we also send our deepest condolences to the family, friends and everyone who was close and actually touched by the works of Vida Blue. Rest in power the king.